Hey guys. Avatar. Avatar. That's us. You should listen to us. New album called Avatar Country. Listen to that, all you in Tunisia. So thank you very much for the interview and congratulations for this very, very big album. Glory to our king. Glad to be here. First question. Why is not you the king? Because I'm not the king. Uh, you'd, you're not being elected to be king. You can be elected to be president and prime minister or, you know, in charge of your uh, stamp collecting club. But a king is born to be king. And clearly, I wasn't that. I am uh, I'm very humble and grateful to be the spokesman for him. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in the uh, in the album, uh, there's two songs with no singer. Mm -hmm. You're not in the singer. Maybe the king wants to say that he is the king and not you. Well, actually, those were originally written by uh, Tim. So uh, <laughs> no, we just the whole thing is doing something like Avatar Country. Uh, we wanted to show and tell the story about our king in ways we hadn't done before. And instrumentals is, was a proper challenge for us. Like, I, for obvious reasons, I wasn't super involved in, in those. I helped naming them and also some opinions on arrangements and stuff. You know, I was there having an opinion. But ultimately, the challenge there to be able to do a piece of music that we feel is telling a story without necessarily having a story you know written for it that that was uh, the challenge there and if you look at song titles that the first one is called winter come when the king dreams of snow to me it sounds like a dream of snow that song i think that's accurate and the king's palace it sounds like a piece of mighty architecture to me and i feel that they also those songs did a king justice i'd like to ask you a question you know uh, you, you're i think you're from gutenberg mm -hmm. yeah And Gothenburg is a very great place uh, where there are many, many, many big metal bands. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there something in the water in Gothenburg? Beer, maybe. Uh, no, I. I think there are a couple of things in this because it's in metal specifically. Yes, Gothenburg, and even if you're being more specific, the smaller towns around Gothenburg, because members of Inflames and Dr. Tranquility, and of, of them are from Bildal, uh, which is right outside by, you know, by the ocean. Uh, I am from Lindum. Uh, we are, as a collectively in the band, most of us from a place called Mundal, and so on. That is, you know, us, uh, the rednecks around the big city many times are the metalheads. And I think, but I, if you look at Sweden at large, you will find great examples in most regions and even a tiny city like most people in the world do not know that there is a Swedish small town called Fagersta. However, Fagersta, they are the birthplace of the hives. And that I feel is kind of typical for Sweden. And you know, if you go way up north, now I'll never remember if they are from Luleå or Umeå, but they are from far north, Meshuggah for instance, and actually plenty more. Uh, Uh, Swedish successful and great bands were up there, Raised Fist, Refused, uh, etc. Uh, so it's a Swedish thing in general, and I think there are a couple of things. One is uh, just how the, the safety net you have in a, a, a welfare state means that you can afford to fail at least once in your life. You know, you don't, it's hard to end up on the street, at least harder than in other places in the world. Uh, so you can do that, you can get a second chance. You, it's okay to, to enter the university when you're 30 or whatever. So you can try other things. Then you have what happens once you have had one successful music export. Uh, I think the world becomes, you, you get, someone has opened the door a bit for you. And in the case of And you know, popular music in general, we had, I guess, ABBA doing that. Uh, and then, you know, in the 80s, when it comes to metal, I think like Ingvar Malmsteen and Europe meant a lot for that that you can be from Sweden, play metal, and be influential and be and hit it big time, you know, like in terms of uh, um, Europe, you know, of course, with a monstrous hit song at the time when heavy metal was on the charts in the world and Ingvar Malmsteen just basically pushing a whole genre forward you can do that as little old Swedes 
And and you know, for more extreme music, of course, then when you get the tombs, the the members and stuff like that from Stockholm uh, or Bathory, and uh, and then uh, melodic death metal stuff from the West Coast, always show examples. Like once you once someone have shown you when as a kid, like look, you can be from here and do this, and also that people. Uh, people around the world here. Here's a new Swedish metal band. They automatically are a bit more open-minded. I feel, for instance, now to compare that to, for instance, now that we are sitting here in France with uh, Gojira, who are becoming very big and a, an amazing band. All of us in in Avatar are big fans of Gojira. What I believe what that gives beyond just you know being a good band from France is that suddenly you can say here's a new metal band from France and people will be slightly more open-minded then the whole culture like in Sweden I feel like to that overall being a musician is something I don't know mom and dad don't say to people to the kids no you have to become a doctor or I will disown you or whatever you know like it's like yeah sure go for it you know that's a valid profession. So there are all these different things. And all, again, as a welfare state, this whole thing where it's affordable to rent somewhere to rehearse and stuff and, and, you know, and get access to get to play shows. There is the youth centers and all these things. So there's a little, there's a breeding ground for it that is, you know, put there. And for us, to, for those who then have the drive, the interest and the ambition have a chance to use. So I think there are a lot of reasons, and maybe also there's something in the water. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, I'm sure. So you, you said you're from Tunisia, right? So I am. I have no reason to believe that there are that you know more Swedes are born with a magical gift of writing great metal than a Tunisian kid is. I think it's just this very complex puzzle that put things in place, and uh, and uh, that there's no reason. In, in my point of view, that uh, uh, that the next great thing wouldn't come from Tunisia instead. Same with the uh, uh, because now my the newest band that I've gotten into recently at the end of last year a lot is this band Ginger from uh, Ukraine. You know, suddenly Ukraine is put on the map in a way maybe it wasn't a few years ago. So, and I think, and especially metal. Metal is such a global thing that that can always happen and it can be anywhere at any time because also remember when we talk about Sweden yeah now it's been for many years and kind of consistently and always a handful there but most of those great things happened uh, during the 90s or started during the 90s now Opeth are still around and still make amazing music for instance but it started way back then so it's not that every year uh, the new great thing is from Sweden we, we are a handful you know and, and there have been a handful over and over again, which makes it look like even more. But again, I, I, that makes me again way more curious now looking forward to where, where in the world will it happen next? Um, <clears throat> do you know a Tunisian band that's called Mirath? Mirath? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the name, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I heard them. M Y R. Yeah, I, I, I've seen the name in writing. That's for sure. I'm gonna check them out. Yeah, it's a, it's a progressive me Tunisian mm -hmm. metal. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, <coughs> um, is it more difficult now? And that's why uh, we need to have uh, something special from the other because there's so many metal bands, there's so many styles, and to be uh, and to be a, a band that uh, we uh, pay for attention. We need to have concepts like you did for Avatar King. Hmm. Well, we didn't do it for attention. We did it because this is what we were inspired to do. And if it's harder now than before, I don't. Our first album came out in 2006. Napster had already come and gone. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know what it was like before. Uh, I I grew up in an era. We got a first modem in my house when I was eight years old. It was slower than it is now today, but of course I, I was, I grew up globally and online. And therefore I, I have not known an, any other environment as an art, as a songwriter, as a musician. So if it's harder, maybe, but it's also like 
the cream always rises to the top, like quality always prevails. And uh, all we can do is again, do what we feel the most inspired to do. And uh, luckily we are in metal, which is so much as is our the genre we, we are working in, which is so much, so way more built in honesty than uh, other anything else in genre wise, I feel like there's, you know, the rappers back in the MTV Crips day, they would rent a house and pretend that they would live there, you know, to sell an image. And I feel like anything that that looks like an image in a proper metal band, you know, I sit here in uniform and with face paint, but that is all based in the arts. So it's always based in some kind of truth and honesty. And, uh, you know, if you have to work really hard to try to make really good songs, that's what it's all about. And the best way to do that is to be honest. And maybe then you might have a chance to get to do this full time. But of course it's hard. This is a lot of fun. Many people want to do this. Of course. One thing very uh, <coughs> interesting and impressive I, I, I did like in your music is, you know, on one of your songs, I don't remember that now, there's uh, jazz inside. Mm -hmm. You listen to something metal, metal, and now it's jazz. Wow! Yeah. No, wait, I, I removed that part. It's yeah, in uh, the King Welcomes You to Avatar Country. Yeah, uh, I use, I play some trombone and I used to play in a big band and we are all into lots of different types of music and it's always interesting to see in what ways you can cross over or blend something in and create the dynamics or make a grander journey of it all, which is you can always do the thing that defines it as metal for me is always that the centerpiece is a riff that you've tried to perform with the best groove possible and just be heavy about it but once you do that once you have that in place that is then by definition metal to me and then i will do whatever i want with it and we do as a group yeah <clears throat> so um uh, that's uh, so congratulations another time for 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 your music because i really 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 i'm big fan uh, can i be uh, your ambassador in tunisia yes please be because uh we keep talking you know it's, it's funny how we feel like oh we are on a world tour well we are mainly on a west european and north american tour there's a lot of world still left out there including tunisia so the idea of the having the word spread and at some point getting to go there at least for one show you know like it's um, and find a way to start making the connections with promoters and all that that you need to make things happen i would love that yeah and um no, uh, we, we played uh, all the interviews that, that I read for you was, you know, uh, centrated in, in the king mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, I know, I think I, 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 we had a, an interview with no, uh, <coughs> just in the beginning, but we, um, so uh, the, the question is, um, how long are we going to, to be in this uh, king things uh, in the interviews? Well, ultimately, like as long as the king asks of me. Uh, but the thing is, we've the idea with every album that we do is to treat it as our final statement. And therefore try to say whatever we want to say or do whatever we want to do in the most well articulated ultimate version of it possible. And uh, we also always say to our ourselves that, you know, every time has to be different the ultimate goal the one only thing we can try to ask for ourselves again honestly as songwriters is to try to write songs we haven't heard yet ourselves and because of that now the world knows about the king and the king shall be with us forever and ever there's even a song about that king after king because when he dies he still returns um, so you have that but since that statement is made we can then move on to whatever the next thing will turn out to be. Because Avatar is always on the move. There were no King albums before Avatar Country, and uh, if we did this one right, there shouldn't be a need for one afterwards. What, uh, what came first? Uh, the concept of the King, the music, the, 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 or the music, uh, when, when you begin? The King. He was, uh, we have known for many years that the King was King, since forever. If you look in the booklets of our older album, the, the thank you list would always end with spe special thanks to Kungen. Kungen is Swedish for the King. 
So that was always there. We knew. What happened now was that the time was right to, to tell the world the truth and open the borders to Avatar Country. So, um, what about uh, yeah, Carl, uh, Carl, Carl uh, XVI? Yeah, the, the king well, of Sweden. He's the king of Sweden. Seems to be a nice guy. The, our king is the king of Avatar Country. And uh, there's a big difference between those kings or any, any leaders of the world and our king. Because I have some been question on what about democracy? And yeah, sure, what about it? Yeah, it's, for, it's very healthy for a normal country to have a democracy, to let people vote in, in, uh, in open elections and all that. It makes sense to me. But however, in our case, it would be a waste of time because our king is the only leader in the world with a 100% approval rating. Everybody in Avatar country loves the king, so there's no need for an election. Uh, you know that Tunisia made a revolution because first we had kings and after we had president that uh, represent uh, themselves as kings with mm. election with, uh, you know, 99 person. So we made a revolution in uh, 2010. Yeah, I followed that. The whole world did. How are you guys doing today? Fine, thank you. And you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just hope it gets, uh, it gets better and better for you. I, I really, really generally do, of course. Uh, no, but yeah, of course. But that's the problem with other kings. And you know, the, then the king of Sweden is a today he's you know he's a figurehead. He's a he's what the president of Germany is. The Germany is led by the parliament and you know and their prime minister. But then president, someone has to go and uh, and and shake hands and kiss babies basically. And that's what the king of Sweden does. And more than anything today, the way I can still view a king in modern times, except for the king of Avatar country. But if we talk about Sweden. Uh, king in modern times as a positive thing is that he gets to symbolize number one we have a king because the power shifted to the people into democracy fairly peacefully fairly pain-free a compromise was reached between the king and and the people that led into the, the representative uh, monarchy and uh, you know that you know that the parliament is actually in charge so he's a symbolic position and that he's still there To me, it symbolizes, if nothing else, longevity of Sweden. That Sweden has, we have had the privilege, I have had the privilege to be born in a nation that has been the same nation for a long time. Which, you know, is a very, you know, a, priv a position of luxury for the Scandinavian countries. Like, Denmark has the oldest flag, is still in use in the world. And uh, you can see where the other Scandinavian countries got the idea from, because they look basically the same. So we are not far behind Denmark in that. So in that way, it makes sense to me to have a Swedish king today. Okay, last question. Uh, is there uh, a princess in Avatar country? Because uh, uh, princess, no king doesn't have any children. Oh, that's and there's uh, no queen either at the moment. Or maybe there are many. Uh, it's, it's from day. It's a day to day thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, guys. Avatar. Avatar. That's us. You should listen to us. New album called Avatar Country. Listen to that, all you in Tunisia. Zanzana. L'émission métal.